So we got our nuclear power plant up and running. Awesome! Until everything broke and we had a million nuclear waste lying around. Not so awesome. But we figured out a solution to some of that waste. Very cool! But we still have like 750,000 left over. And we have to get rid of that today. So hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory, where things are looking better. We got rid of a lot of the nuclear waste in the power plant here and radiation levels are clear! So we can start working on a solution to all of that nuclear waste. And of course that solution is the loops. Praise be the loops. And also thank you to this video sponsor, Prosperous Universe, but more on that later. Because love is loops, life is loops. They are our savior. We're gonna be turning all the nuclear waste into plutonium. Plutonium is the answer. It takes nuclear waste to make, and the non-fissile uranium, which also takes nuclear waste to make. And after a little bit of processing, everything will end up in here to make plutonium fuel rods. And these can be used in our nuclear power plants, or we can send them to ye ol' awesome sink for like a million points each. So with all of our existing nuclear waste, this is how we're gonna get rid of it. And here's how we're gonna get there. First, we're essentially gonna copy this entire factory and put it in here somewhere to turn all the uranium waste into the non-fissile uranium for further processing. And the other half of our waste has to go into the loops to make the plutonium pellets. And all this other stuff is pretty much already set up. So to get things started, all we have to do is start building all of the blenders. And since we have 1,125 nuclear waste, half of it needs to go to these blenders. So we have 562. 562.5 divided by 25 is 22.5 blenders. Okay, we're gonna overclock everything though. So 22.5 divided by 2.5 is nine. So we need nine fully overclocked blenders for this. And you know what? I think it'd be pretty ironic to turn our old nuclear death pit into the processing facility. Like it used to be the burden of our woes and now it is the solution to everything. Yeah, it's a good idea. Like subscribing or hitting that like button. So let's start retrofitting the building. No more bins, no more lights. And it's looking a little too snug for nine blenders. So we're gonna make a little bit more space as well. But walkways, you're gonna stay because you're freaking groovy, brother! And allow me to look back down at all the problems I'm about to deal with. So, all the blenders have their space, they're rocking, they're rolling, except we're pretty tight on space because we're gonna have two outputs and four inputs in between these two machines. So things are gonna start looking weird, very weird, because we're gonna have to stack. <laughs> we're gonna have to stack a lot. So like we can have the two input belts here, but then we're gonna have to stack even more and have the pipes right up above. So we'll have a pipe there, pipe there, and that's for the nitric and sulfuric acid. But then we have the actual outputs of water and the fissile uranium. So you brother, going on a freaking trip on a wild rocket ship up into the sky. Like right up there, please. And we'll just have a merger here. And this will work just fine, right? You better believe it. Cool. And then the water will go into pipe right underneath, right here. Boom. Why? What clearance? You? That's the general idea. It's gonna look horrendous, but it works. And now we have our three lines of 750 non-fissile uranium per minute because each of these three machines makes 750, the lines go up to 780, da da da, we need three. And also, we have 900 water being produced as well, which we have to get rid of. If the water backs up, this all backs up, the uranium backs up, welcome back to the apocalypse. So, what are we gonna do with all that water? Well, we're gonna turn it all into concrete. So we got a bunch of refineries over here, and we are using the wet concrete recipe that will take a ton of water and make a ton of concrete. Because we're gonna need that concrete eventually to encase the plutonium. Because that's kind of where we're heading now. Because the next step is making the plutonium pellets, since we have the non-fissile uranium and all of the waste. So we're making 750 times 3, 2,250 non-fissile uranium. <laughs> okay. 
and that divided by 100 is 22.5. And that means we need to make 22.5 particle accelerators to get rid of all of our junk. Wow. <laughs> you see the small, the small problem there? Small problem is the power on these guys is dynamic. When it's getting started up, it uses about 250 megawatts. And then when it ramps up fully, it uses 750. So this is going back and forth all the time. And I kind of want to overclock it out the wazoo. Because if we overclock the 22.5 particle accelerators, then we just have to build nine. And nine's a nice number, because these boys are chonky. It's like three by five tiles of space and bud. If we're gonna build the 22.5 of them, it would take up about the same amount of space as all of our water extractors. And honestly, that would kind of ruin the vibe around here. Oh, but I kind of forgot to actually, if we want to fully overclock these bad boys, we're gonna need nine of them. And that's gonna scale this 200 to 750 power to like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And honestly, I don't know if our power grid can survive. Like, we're already using about 36,000 megawatts. Our production is 105,000. I'm sure if we turned on all of our nuclear stuff, that's like 8,000 megawatts right there. And if we're building a bunch of these bad boys, I have no idea how much power that's gonna suck up. Like, we need these to run too when our nuclear plant is off, which is really important as well, because we're gonna have to get rid of nuclear waste all the time, right? So, ho <laughs> ho. Well, we can do the math at least with this. 750 max consumption from these machines. Okay, well that times 22.5. Okay, it's like, you know, it's like 17,000 megawatts. It's, 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 it's a lot, but like, it's possible. We'd end up around probably like 60,000 megawatts of consumption. Yeah, but I don't want to build the 22.5. So we, we have to do a test. Uh, the only way to see the actual numbers here of how much overclocked power these guys are gonna take is by running the machine. So we're gonna grab some non-fissile uranium and some nuclear waste here from our emergency area that we're at right now. We have plenty of non-fissile stuff. <laughs> plenty, plenty, plenty. We already have a bin full? Of course we do. Multiple bins. So let's grab that. And now I wonder if we have any nuclear waste left. We literally might be out. It's possible. This thing's been running for a while. But then again, we had a lot of nuclear waste. A lot of nuclear waste, okay. <laughs> Imagine me being worried about running out of nuclear waste for a second. Oh. <laughs> what a wholesome little thought there, eh? Alrighty though, let's test this bad boy out. There goes the non-fissile. And there goes the waste. Hop to it, loop. Show me. Your power. This is actually our first time running one of these guys in our playthrough here. Dude, they're so cool. I love them. No matter where we build them, you better believe they're gonna be like a standout feature. You can have them on the roof and on display, dude. They're so cool. Take, so there's our first plutonium pellets. Glorious. And how much power? 3,250? Oh my goodness. That's a lot. Okay, so if we want nine of these that can take up to 3,250, <laughs> 29,000 megawatts. <laughs> About 30,000 megawatts. But you know what the craziest thing is? The nuclear waste processing will take up as much power, pretty much, if not more, than all of our power consumption in the world right now. Which is awesome. But more awesome, we won't go over our production limit. So it's possible, and you better believe we're gonna do it! Yikes, though. Those be spicy boys. I don't even know if we have enough stuff to make them. Let's go on a quick trip on air, kids. Eat! See what's going on at the home base. Do a little bit of a shopping trip. Anyway. <laughs> Spooky amount of lag as we get to the desert here. What's going on? How many supercomputers do we have? One million. That's cool. All right, turbo motors? This is all we have in the world, but it'll do. 
and we'll do a fused modular frames. We can make these in batches. We don't have like a proper setup yet, but that's okay. Radio control units. Oh boy. <laughs> these are gonna be the worst in the future. Let me tell you. Uh, cooling systems. I'm sure past kibs would have definitely made some of them, right? Definitely past kibs would have done such a thing because he is so smart. And also, we have the control rods over here. Good! So let's catch our return flight with air kibs. And take a look over here at what we can do. So we need nine of these particle accelerators, right? Well, clearly we're gonna build a couple up there. But also over here, it's just flat space. Could be accelerators, right? Maybe, why not? I just don't know if we're gonna be able to fit all of them. Maybe we could fit six. Then like three over there. That's like the dream. I, I didn't really measure any of this out though, so. Eh. We're past kids, it's time for the ultimate test. How well did you plan for the unexpected? Uh -huh. So if we can get three here, I'm very happy. There's one. It's looking like we can get three. Two. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. It's like the perfect amount of space. How does he do it? Actually, that was like pure luck. <laughs> no, it was not actually. No, that was a part of the plan all along. <laughs> so we can double these back on the other side. And then we just took them up. Oh, how do we do the belt work though? Is there a lot of space under here? What's even going on under here? I think this is our, yeah, this is our nuclear fuel rod setup. Okay. And we have pretty much an empty ceiling. Okay, so yeah, we can just run the belts underneath here and move and groove everything to where it needs to be. And again, we can put the other three particle accelerators right over there. And then we just boop in a bit of belt work. Splendid, hardly a problem at all. And what's even better, since we're working with nine particle accelerators, we can split up all of our items into three belts. So we have three sets of three. So load balancing is super duper easy, especially because we had the three belts of non-fissile uranium down there. And since we had two belts of nuclear waste, one belt would become the non-fissile stuff and the other goes upstairs, split in three and we are done. And the main thing is it looks pretty good. I think we'll still have to mess around with this building a little bit because we kind of have like clashing designs with this and that. We'll figure that out. But what's even better is the loops line up when they're faced back to back. So all the outputs go down the middle here and the big loops still line up. It's beautiful. Only problem is we can't actually paint the particle accelerator so we'll do that after a new update or something. Now though, we have all the plutonium pellets we can make, and we have 675 per minute being made in the loops. Meaning, we have to turn all of those into encased plutonium pellets in the assemblers here. And we're gonna need a lot. <laughs> we're gonna need so many. Because each of these assemblers can only handle 10. And even when they're fully overclocked, they can only handle like 25. So, 27, okay. Bit more than a handful, but you know, not bad. And so that's why I put another floor on top of the blenders making the non-fissile stuff. Uh, a, we needed to move all products like between this building and the roof of that building. So we needed something here to facilitate that. And may as well just put in the floor now because we need all of the assemblers. Now concrete though, each of the assemblers needs 20 concrete. Fully overclocked, it's gonna need 50 per. And 50 times 27 is a lot, 1,350. Okay, so that's what we're producing down here. Past kids set this up long, long, long ago, and that's not gonna be a problem anymore. One thing with it though, is the water from the non-fissile area is going over this way to feed these refineries, to make the concrete. So these concrete makers always have to be running. So the belts are going to be coming up to this floor and they're going to be running through in overflow awesome sink. And the rest will go this way and off to the races. Meaning we just quickly have to set up all of the assemblers with the smart mod. Leaving us with the last task. 
the plutonium fuel rods themselves. It is time, brother. Finally time to get rid of some nuclear waste. So we have all the encased plutonium cells. We, oh, oh. We do not have any of this stuff. Well, we have some of it because we are building it over here. We just don't have the right amount. But we're too close to plutonium, so I'm just booping it all in here. And now, as if by magic, we have the right amount of crystal oscillators, steel beams, and control rods. And for the heat sinks, I went to our aluminum build across the world and just added on one extra production line. We're using the alternate heat exchanger recipe to get casings and rubber to make a heat sinks. And then to transport the heat sinks from here, at our train station, I added on another station right at the end here. And this will just transport heat sinks in two freight cars as well. Because the throughput on a train going literally across the entire map from A to B is pretty insane. So we have one train for now, but we might need two later on. So now we can actually get to the plutonium. And good news for this, we only need 18 fully overclocked manufacturers. And we'll end up building 22.5 fuel rods per minute. And oh, but don't even have me begin on how many nuclear power plants we can build with that many fuel rods. <laughs> but one step at a time here. So we'll build nine of the manufacturers on one floor, build a floor up above, do it again, and then realize, wait a second, can we even fit that many here? There's eight, where do we put nine? I guess we have room up here. Well, we don't have materials up here, sad. But yeah, we have the room here. That can work. And then maybe, no, this is 100% what we're doing. Because this back building is pretty much shaped like a brick, we're gonna change it up on the final floor. We're gonna have a wall probably about here, separating off the room. Then we will put manufacturers, uh, two of them just up in front here. So one there and one here. So this will be connected to the bottom floor and the other manufacturer here will be connected to the top floor. And then we're going to have an awesome sink. We are going to be sinking the plutonium fuel rods while we're getting rid of the <laughs> million nuclear waste. But maybe later on we'll actually use them for power. Uh, let me know if we should go in that direction in the comments below. But for now, more of this. But check this out. The smart mod got even more smart. Look at this! Ah, technology is amazing. Oh, but that was helpful. Only thing I changed though was the belts that are on that angle, and I just replaced them with the lifts because they look a lot better. And all together, the whole factory back here is looking fantastic now. Yeah, with those two guys there, I have some belts running across the roof, add some detail there. The true awesome sink that will be sinking plutonium. And best of all, I've done a bunch of hours of belt work to get everything together so that now we are pretty much ready to go. As in, we can actually start processing the nuclear waste. Wait, and final two things. We're not going to be able to fly around with our hover pack anymore once the nuclear radiation comes in. So I quickly threw in a bunch of walking paths so we can walk around with our hazmat suit. And also, I made some smart splitters over by our nuclear waste area so that we can change them to send all of the nuclear waste over to our emergency system or into our production lines. <laughs> so it is time for the games to begin. Then, emergency processing offline. We're done. <laughs> Plutonium processing, running, nuclear restart. <laughs> We're not doing that until all of the waste is gone so we can hold up on that. And everything over there is running. Good. And we connect up the spicy broccoli to our non fissile uranium plant over here. And that will all start moving and grooving. And now we bring the nuclear waste back into the facility. <sighs> I, <laughs> I'm so nervous about this. It's taken a hundred hours, by the way, to get back to this point. So if something screws up again, I don't, I don't even know. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. God help us all. And the waste is going to enter the same way the normal nuclear waste does. Just through these belts here. So by the time it reaches over there, 
both lines should be load balanced properly. And now it has returned. <laughs> Please. You know what? Let's just enjoy the moment. That's the beginning of the end of the nuclear waste. Oh, here comes the non-thistle, meaning we got some loops moving soon. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh my, I didn't even think about power. Oh my gosh, wait, 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 wait. Can we deal with the power here? Help. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> the max consumption is over our production now. And the consumption is rising. Uh, it's already happening. It's too late. The waste is already in place. There's no going back now. Okay, though, we're getting our plutonium pellets. And everything's getting encased. And our fuel rods are being made at one every minute and a half, pretty much. Sheesh, that's a lot of power, too. Speaking of, how we looking? <laughs> you can definitely tell the loops are on. 108 max consumption, but our actual consumption is not flying too high. It'll probably end up around 60 or 70,000 megawatts, I would assume. At least once all the overflow builds up and things. But even then, I think we're gonna be okay here. And very soon, we're going to have our first plutonium fuel rod. Oh, my saviors. Eaters of the nuclear waste, welcome to our reality. <sighs> we did it. However though, off to the sink with ye. We're simply crushing you down for tickets for the next little while here. Oh, and once this is fully running, we're gonna be making the 22.5 plutonium fuel rods, right? <laughs> That's gonna be a lot of tickets, brother. Each one, is worth about 150,000 points. So, is you know, about 3.4 million points per minute. Not bad from going to the end of the world to absolute coupon riches. But big question now, how long, if everything's working correctly, will we have to process all of this waste? Well, last time I checked, we had about 700,000, 750,000. How much do we have now? Still around about 750,000. But at full speed, the whole system can deal with 1,125 waste per minute. So 750,000 divided by that number <laughs> is an odd number of minutes. And that many minutes divided by 60 is 11.1 .1 hours. Okay, this is gonna take a while. In the meantime, I'll be checking out the game Prosperous Universe, this video's sponsor. It's a space economic simulator, similar to EVE Online, but it's all business, baby. You focus on building and running your own corporation by designing, managing, and trading goods while breaking into new markets and expanding across the universe. There will be competition, though, so you have to be smart about your dealings. Or, if you don't mind making some enemies, there are other ways around things. So, if you enjoy stocks, logistics, and corporate shenanigans like myself, you'll find yourself right at home with this game. And it's free to play! So check out the first link in the description and try it out today. Anyway though, thank you Prosperous Universe for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to our own shenanigans. Or I've quickly realized I'm gonna have to monitor this and check it for problems over the next little bit. So I think that's gonna be all for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching, but have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye